Okay, today's lesson is actually 4.2, day number one, but we're starting off with a little review of what we've done so far in Trig. And if you can answer these four questions, then you are on track with the first couple things we've learned about Trig. So I'll pause for a moment while you work on those four. All right, here's how it should have gone for you. Number one, draw the reference triangle. Well, I know that they always are a triangle that has nice angles in it. And therefore, they're, I'm never going to have an angle like 133 or uh, you know, a square root or something weird like that. All right, so where is 3 pi over 4? Well, here's where pi is. And so 3 fourths of the way to pi, I like to think of this as 3 fourths pi. 3 fourths of the way there is right there. Okay, and that's where 3 pi over 4 is. And so the reference triangle is this one, drop to the x-axis. That little angle in there must be, in you, even though it is 45 degrees, you wouldn't say that. You keep it in radians, and it would be 1 fourth pi. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Awesome. On to the next one, negative 220. Well, if you know that the circle kind of looks like this, and negative goes this way, negative 220 is all the way around here. I'm not sure exactly how far, but I know it's past 90, and it's, it's past 180. And it's probably just a little further than that. So I'm going to back up here and say, how about about there? And then you figure out exactly how far that is past the 180. And how far past 180 is 220? 40 degrees. So this part right there is 40 degrees. And therefore, there is your little, uh, what do you call that, reference triangle. Okay, And the angle that goes with it was 40. All right, next up is number three. Oh, question? How is that 220? Well, would you agree to here is 180? Yeah. And then we got to add on some more, right, to get up to 220. So 180 plus how much more? 180 plus another 40 would get me to here. Okay, so that's why it's negative 220 up there. All right, 3 pi over 4. I figured out that this had been 45 right there. That was a 45 degree angle. That means that this was... A 45 plus another 45 plus another 45, 345s. How much is that? 135. Now, if you want to do it that way, it's totally okay. If you'd rather do that little fraction thing I showed you, you'd say 3 fourths pi, and then you multiply by either pi over 180 or 180 over pi. If you go like this, you quickly realize nothing's going to cancel. Like the pi's are going to actually get squared, and that's really not good. So then, instead... We do 180 over pi. And then after you do all your canceling and cross, there's a lot of canceling that have to happen in here and here, you'd end up down to 135. Okay, the next one is 220 would be how many radians? All right, well, I do that 180 over pi thing, because uh, or pi over 180. In this case, which one should I do? Pi over 180, because that way the degrees will cancel. A zero can cancel, and now I have 22 over 18. Is there anything that goes into 22 and 18? Two does, and therefore two would be two times 11, and this would be two times nine. I cancel off my twos, and it would be 11 on the top, oh, pi, 11 pi over on the bottom, nine. 11 pi over nine. Raise your hand if you had that one right. That's a lot of you, very good. So who are my proud perfects? I am totally on track, I got a four out of four. There's a lot of them. Good. All right. Now let's see what we're learning now. This is uh, kind of your review of normal trig officially. I gave you a quick snip, snapshot of this on the first day. But if you have a 3, 4, 5 triangle, first of all, this is really important that you know how to get that at third side. I know you probably have memorized this 3, 4, and 5. But this other side, you've got to get good at saying, okay, that other side is the square root of this squared and this squared because of the whole a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So do you get that that's the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared? That way when I change the numbers from a 3, 4, 5 triangle to a 12 and a 9 and you have to figure out the other side, you know what to do. Okay, so 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, this is 9 plus 16, that makes 25. Square root of 25 is 5. Oh, it works. Okay. So I'll use 3, 4, 5 for now just because it's nice. Then, if this is my angle I'm really focusing on, what's the sine of my angle? The well, sine you hopefully have memorized is sine is Sokotoa. Sine is what again? Opposite over, Opposite over 
hypotenuse. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and I'd usually like, put those little helper letters in there, but it doesn't. You don't really need them. The opposite side is from this is the three over five. Raise your hand if you would have been able to tell me the sine of that angle. Okay, good. Then I'd like you to tell me what the cosine and the tangent are. Everybody write it down. Cosine of theta, call it theta. Cosine of theta is what? And tangent of theta is what? If you haven't memorized so Katoa, you can just write it across the top of your page at the beginning of the test. It's totally okay. But you're going to have done this so many times that hopefully that will start coming naturally. All right, cosine of theta. George, what'd you get? Okay, so ka toa, ka, four over five, you got it. Okay, and then work through tangent, see if you can do it. You got it. Raise your hand if you had those two right. Okay, good. That's the base, base, easy stuff. Uh, what happens when they don't tell you one of the sides? Well, and you got to figure it out. So let's say this is 8 and this is 11, and you got to figure out the other side. Okay. Well, you know the whole a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing, right? Do you remember how at that always ends, you always end up with a square root? So it's a square root of the other two, but in this case, is it the square root of the other two added? No, so it's the square root of what? 8 squared and then what? Minus 11 squared. Now, is this even possible? No, because I have a square root of a negative. So something is wrong. Tell me what's wrong with my triangle in the first place. The hypotenuse is messed up. Why? It's too small. The hypotenuse has got to be the largest side. So if I make it like this now, is that humanly possible? All right, figure out what the third side is now. In case you don't know what 11 squared is, it's 121. A lot of people haven't memorized it. Memorize it. And there's no calcs on these tests, and you'll have to actually subtract numbers. <gasps> Scary. Don't forget the square root of, or you'll get a ridiculously big answer. So square root of 121 minus what? 64, and has anybody actually subtracted those successfully? Thank you. Square root of 57. It's totally okay to leave the answer with the square root of 57 in it when I ask you what is the sine of theta. You get how that problem just added one extra step. You had to find the third side, and now it's exactly like the other problem. So, sine's opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side, square root of 57 over hypotenuse is 11. There we go. Good enough. Don't have to try to simplify square roots that are not nice. Those are called irrational numbers if they don't work out nice. If they come out with negatives under them, they're really bad, and then they're called not irrational but imaginary. Imaginary. If they have a negative underneath the root, they're imaginary. Okay, moving on. Next kind. Let's say they're a little more cryptic and they just give you Sine of theta is 3 sevenths. And then they say, what's cosine of theta? If you just try to use the 3 and the 7, you will fail. So, you've got to find, didn't they just basically tell you two sides? Uh -huh. So next to this, good Minnesotan there, yeah. Um, if we have a triangle... Can you just draw one off to the side quick and say, okay, if this is theta, then sine is opposite of hypotenuse, the opposite side is 3, and the hypotenuse is 7. Now, my picture doesn't match up perfectly, but it's not bad. Good enough. Find the third side. So in this case, it's even more complicated just because they didn't draw you the triangle. But really, what does it always come down to? You've got to find the third side, and then you just have to have memorized what does cosine mean. Ka, adjacent over hypotenuse. Like out of Sokatoa. All right, so hopefully you knew enough to go square root of 
49 minus 9. That makes square root of 40. And somebody really smart would have noticed that, oh, wait, I can go root 4 and root 10, and that's 2 root 10. Yes, that is, and that's a good idea. I have to say, yes, it's not simplified if you left the answer as the square root of 40. So watch out for simplifying. You need to simplify. All right. So if I just figured out that that side is 2 root 10, now it's just back to that same kind of problem we started with. What does cosine mean? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is this one. And hypotenuse is that one. So 2 root 10 over 7. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. You're really close to knowing everything you need to know. We have one more topic that we have to cover. And this is all supposed to be review, y'all. Learned this before. That's why hopefully it's coming back fairly quickly. What happens if instead of giving you two sides, which is what I kept doing last time, what if I give you an angle in one of the sides? That's all you need to know to be able to do everything else. You can find all the other sides and all the other angles. All right, so if this is a right triangle, and I said this was 37 degrees, and I said that this uh, was a height of 8, you'd be able to find any other side that you wanted. But you have to know how to use trig. So a quick reminder, you'd start by saying, well, do I want sine, cosine, or tangent, or what? Well, it depends on which side I want to figure out. Let's say they want to figure out this side right there. Could be the hypotenuse, could be that one. It just depends on what they ask for. All right, so they're usually going to put a letter there, of course. We're growing up beyond question marks, so we'll call it X. And we're going to say, is it sine, cosine, or tangent that's going to use the 8 and the X? Which one is it? Tangent. Tangent is opposite over hypotenuse. So tangent is the one I want, but always remember to put the degrees next. Tangent of 37 equals tangent is opposite over adjacent. What I just set up there, that's huge. You're going to do that a lot this semester. Let's make sure you understood what just happened there. I always have to have an angle here, and I always have to have a ratio of the two sides here that looks like a fraction. Now, how come that's like so helpful? Because I can use a calculator to find sine of 37, because we'd never give you one that nasty. On the tests, we are going to expect you to figure out simpler ones like tangent of 30, because you're going to be able to go back to the 3, 4, or the, the 30, 60, 90 triangle and the 45, 45, 90 triangle, which I'll remind you about later. But for right now, all I'm saying is you can use a calculator for the easy ones, like, or the hard ones like this. Grab your calculator, find out what tangent of 37 is. Remember, you've got to be in degrees, otherwise you're going to be finding tangent of 37 radians. Yes, you may, no problem. Yes, you should leave me an item. A cell phone is very logical because then you can never get in trouble for using it. Or a shoe is even okay. All right. So, Mr. U, what'd you get for tangent of 37? See, you're in a great spot for viewing because the teacher generally stands right here and I'm looking right at you because, you know, like that's the angle you chose right there. Okay. All right, 0. 0.75? 735? No, 0.75. Keep going. No, 3, 5, 5. All right, good enough. That's good. Okay, so of that, I'm going to round it to 0. 0.75. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Equals, well, I didn't know if you meant 0. 0.735 or whether you would, anyway. 8 over x. Now, I am going to, I rounded it in the middle of the problem. That is dangerous. Okay. But I didn't want to have to carry over a gigantic decimal just because I was being lazy. But do you realize at the end my answer is going to be rounded? Okay. So just be aware of that. And if they ask for the exact answer or the answer to three decimal places, you realize I rounded to only two here, so that would mess things up. All right, so back to, I'm going to multiply this out. How do I clear a denominator? People sometimes go brain dead when it's an x. It's still the same way. How do you clear that? Times by x. Times by x here, and then times by x here. Cancels, cancels. Yay, I'm almost done. 0.75x equals 8. I'm almost done. Trying to get the x alone, so 
divide by 0.75. These guys cancel, and I have x alone, and whatever 8 divided by 0.75 is, what is it? <laughs> How about you give me the first two decimal places? If you round it, 10.67. Excellent. Okay. So, does that make sense? If this was 8 and this is 10.67, is that possible? Does that seem reasonable? Yes. And you should check that because sometimes you get an answer and you realize, oh, wait a minute. I just found out an answer that's going to make the triangle not work because the, the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. Well, in this case, it worked. All right. I'm going to give you one last one. It's hopefully just all you. I'm going to go from the other side. Say this is 20 degrees. I'm going to say this is a height of 3, and I want to know what x is. See if you can set that one up. First thing you ask yourself is, should I use sine, cosine, or tangent? Then you set up the little dealie where you have the function and an angle equaling a fraction. Totally okay to use your calculator if you want to on this kind. Okay, you should have picked opposite and hypotenuse. From this guy's perspective, that's the opposite and the hypotenuse. Which one does opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So sine of 20 is, I like to put a little O and an H. Don't have to, a little helper, helper letters. And the opposite side was 3, over hypotenuse side is X. Now I'm going to get rid of my helper things. And now I'm going to multiply by X on both sides. Oh, wait, actually, let's figure out what sine of 20 is. I'm sure you probably already did it. Want to tell me again? Okay. And then multiply by x on both sides. Those x's cancel. Then divide by 0.034. x equals 3 over 0.34. I'm guessing it's around 10, 11, something like that. 10 or 9 or... Okay, 8.77. All right, thank you. And does that... Okay, if you rounded it, apparently it'll be off a little bit from this. It, this is the not rounded answer I'm hearing, right? Okay, good enough. If you rounded it, you know you're close to that. Okay, 8.77. Now, if I look back at the original problem, does this seem possible that this could be 8.77? That side's 3, that side's 8. It's a really small angle. Yeah, that's possible since that's a really small angle. All right, the main thing you're looking for is this side's got to be the biggest. All right, one last thing. Sine, cosine, and tangent aren't the end of the list. Sine, cosine, and tangent is only half of what you have to know. We're moving up. You started with just sine, cosine, and tangent. You learned that like two years ago. We haven't done it like trig for a while since then. So all you really have to do is memorize three more. So everybody write this down. Sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta, and they all leave, leave an imp, like a lot of space around here. Uh, they all have a sister function. Sine goes with cosecant. I know that may not make sense to you, but you'll get used to it. Sine goes with CSC. Cosecant of theta. Cosine goes with secant of theta. If you remember what secant means, it's a secant line, is if you have a curve and you have two dots on it and you have a line like that that goes through two dots on the curve, that's called a secant line. But it doesn't really, you don't need to know that yet, but that's in case you've ever heard the word secant before, that's where it came from. And the last thing is, Tangent goes with, does anyone know the last one? How about this? Secant has cosecant. Sine has cosine. I don't know if you ever noticed that, but sine and cosine actually go together, kind of. But So tangent, what do you think? 
Okay, I'm gonna give you the, the, the I'm gonna give you this little pattern again. Sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. There should be a co in it. You see the pattern. It's gotta be a co in it. Cotangent. All right. So what we do is cot, C-O-T. Cotangent is the three-letter deal. We got a three-letter deal for all of them, right? So now I want to explain how they are related to each other. They aren't equal. They aren't really equal to each other, but they are like this. If, if the sine, let, let me make a little triangle here that can go with this. If the sine of a three, four, five triangle, here's three, here's four, here's five, and this is the angle we're talking about. If the sine of that is opposite over hypotenuse, then it's going to be 3 over 5. Take a guess. There's only a few ways you could do this, so you probably happen upon it. What do you think? There you go. Your gut was right. 5 over 3. It's an inverse. Yep. It's a flip. Okay, so sine is 3 fifths. Cosecant would be 5 thirds. The main one thing that you're going to eventually remember that they're flips of each other. Okay, but you just got to remember which functions kind of go together, which are the sister functions. Okay, so I'm sometimes going to refer to these as the flipping sisters. Your sister functions, and you flip to get them. So if cosine, cosine, go back to this triangle, cosine of that, ha, adjacent over hypotenuse, 4 over 5, then what would secant be? 5 fourths. And if the tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is 3 over 4, then what's cotangent? 4 thirds. All right. So here's a question that you could have never answered walking in today, but now you can. There's another classic Pythagorean triple. This is 5, this is 12. Anybody got the third one memorized? 13, very good. Just like 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple, 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. Can come in handy in the ACT test if you get the qu that question. Uh, now, you could have answered sine, you could have answered cosine, you could have answered tangent if I'd asked you those. But now, you should be able to tell me what is the secant of theta. So if you don't know the secant, don't do the secant. Do its flip and sister, and then just flip it. So if you know what sister goes with it, which one goes with it? Cosine. Yep. And if cosine is the one, going back to this chart, cosine is the one that was across from it here, see? Then if I figure out the cosine of it and then just flip it, I'll be good. So first I'm going to go, okay, then that's 1 over the cosine of theta. And that means cosine of theta was what on the uh, cosine's adjacent? Ka, adjacent over hypotenuse, 12 over 13. So then I don't want 12 over 13. I want 1 over 12 over 13, which would be a flip, which would be 13 over 12. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Good. You've learned three new functions then. Sine, cosine, and tangent now have sister functions. And it's sine goes with what? Cosecant. Cosine goes with what? Secant. And tangent goes with cotangent. Now, one way to remember that, and this is dumb, but it works for some people, is that S's and C's go together. Do you see what I'm doing here? S and C. S and C. And then the last two just kind of make sense. Tangent and cotangent seem like they should have been together. The other ones don't flow naturally, but tangent and cotangent are like pilot and copilot. They all, they, they match up nicely. Okay, so S's and C's, and then the last two just make sense. All right, you know everything that you need to know for this next little practice sheet. So it's on the way back. I'm going to do a couple of them with you. And that's the end of the video. Actually, you know what? I'll do the first couple out in the video just in case you're stuck at home doing these. There are a few.
uh, too many problems on this, which is always a good problem to have as a teacher. I can always cross off a few, and and uh, it's a lot easier than me trying to make new ones if there weren't enough. So I'm going to ask you, just like usual, my commitment is to you is that I will try to keep your assignments reasonable length. Your commitment to me is you will do them. All right, so let's flip it to the back side, and I feel like the extra uh, extra problems we have are 8, 10, 12, and 14. Let's dump those. 8, 10, 12, and 14. Now, of course, if you are the overachiever type and you feel like you need extra practice, well, there you go. There's your problems. I know that's... I was thinking about you when I said that. All right. So let's go with number one, two, three, and four are going to be just too easy. Let's go to let's go to five. Number five. Assume theta is an acute angle in a right triangle satisfying the given conditions. Evaluate the remaining trigonometric functions. Sine of theta is three sevenths. Well, if they give me this, they just gave me two sides of a triangle, and I need the third one. So I'm going to draw myself a little triangle, and I'm going to go off to the side and say, all right, triangle that has sine is opposite of hypotenuse, 3 and 7. And then I'm going to remember that Mr. Server said these are all square roots of the other two squared. And so do I actually add the other two? No, on this kind I subtract them. So I go 49 minus 9, which would be a square root of 40, which we even did before in class. And you'll hopefully remember that you've got to reduce that root 4 and root 10, which is 2 root 10. My third side's 2 root 10. Now, what am I actually supposed to do? It didn't ask me even to find the other side, but I need it because now I'm asked to find the remaining trigonometric functions, and there are a total of six of them. So they gave you one of them. You've got to find the other five of them. And my recommendation is to just write them down in the same like pattern that we did before. So, like, sine is, I'm going to try to move this over a little bit. Uh, my triangle's moving, too. Yikes. Okay. And that's going to be true root 10. I'll put that here. And I would, right next to your sine, I would put the, sis, the flippin' sister of it, which is the cosecant. So, hopefully you can, I can't seem to move this over. I'm just going to erase it. No, I can't because I need those numbers. I'm going to try to move it, move it down here somewhere. I can't. This is a train wreck. All right, I'm going to remember the numbers. 7, 3, and 2 root 10. Okay. 7, 3, and 2 root 10. Put that way over here. 7, 3, 2 root 10. And now, sine goes to cosecant. And the next one's cosine goes with its flippin' sister, secant. And the next one is tangent, and it goes with cotangent. So this may have seemed like a small number of problems, but when you throw in all the parts you have to do, that's one of the reasons I want to cut it down. Okay, so now, what are they? Well, if I know all the sides, it's easy. I just say cosecant. I look over here, actually, and say that's a flippin' sister of that. So flip it, 7 thirds. Cosine of theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is the angle we're talking about. Adjacent, that one, over hypotenuse, that one. 2 root 10 over 7. Secant, just flip it. 7 over 2 root 10. I think you're getting the idea. Find the tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. 3 over 2 root 10. This brings up an important point. Uh, there are classes, if you were watching this uh, and you're not even one of our students here in Minnetonka, where you have to rationalize the denominator and get that square root out of there. We don't have to get square roots out of the denominator. We can leave them. The reason is, apparently, on the AP calc test, you do not have to do that. And therefore, even though it's kind of a math tradition, math teachers used to always make kids get the square roots out of the denominators. Uh, since it's allowed on the AP, we're allowing it also. So you could leave this answer just like this and not have to do this process to get the square root up to the top. It's kind of nice because it's a pain in the butt. All right, so that is a typical question off your homework. Please feel free to ask more questions during your work time. And that's all I got for the video.